On the line with us is uh, Dr. Eric Feigelding, the epidemiologist and senior fellow at the Federation for American Scientists, uh, the first whistleblower on the COVID pandemic, formerly a faculty member and researcher at the Harvard Medical School and Harvard's T.H. Chang School of Public Health. Uh, his uh, Twitter handle, which I strongly encourage you to follow, one of the best sources of information on the COVID pandemic and most current is Dr. Eric Ding, D-R-E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G, uh, on Twitter. Uh, it starts with an ad at the very beginning. Dr. Feigelding, welcome back to the program. Um, we're hearing that Omicron is 70 times faster in spreading and evades the vaccine, or is certainly capable of that. Um, uh, what does this mean? Just how dangerous is Omicron? Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, the 70 times is actually 70 times faster replicating in your in your trachea, in your windpipe. Uh -huh. um, and so it's not transmitted 70 times. That would be apocalyptical. But it, Omicron is about probably about four to six times faster than the original strain and, and probably three to four times faster than Delta. That is an incredibly, incredibly large transmission advantage, considering Delta is already twice as tra transmissible as the original variant. And it's, it's so fast that I think uh, it will li likely be dominant in the United States by Christmas, literally next week. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're not that far in which uh, it's been exponentially increasing from 1% to 10% to upper teens now in the U.S. Um, already within just two weeks. And that is way faster than anything we've seen before. And regardless of what you think about mild or not mild, and I don't think it's necessarily milder, the, the issue is that once exponential cases blow up and you have a million cases in the near future, that uh, will actually over swamp all the hospitals, which are already at capacity. So you're, you're uh, predicting basically a hospital crisis across the United States yeah. within the next six there's, or eight weeks no, at the most. There's no doubt about it. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. That this there's hospitals in Michigan and Pennsylvania, a lot of many states that are completely, completely full. They have no more beds. They're diverting patients already. And that's just Delta. That's not even Omicron. The Omicron hasn't even like truly escalated across the U.S. yet. It has started in the U.K. Oh, it's hit 50% in London within uh, just a few days. But we haven't even seen the worst of this. Yeah, and I can't emphasize, you know, as Christmas gatherings happening, a lot of letting down the guard and not enough people getting boosters. We're still under 20 percent of the population that is boosted in the United States. We're in deep, deep trouble. And I think people are just way too complacent and blase about all this. I was reading a piece yesterday that said, and I, and I, I wanted to, I was waiting for you to come on so I could ask you to confirm this or, or knock it down, that the booster shot, uh, you know, according to the new science here, doesn't just, it's not like, you know, you get the first shot and you have immunity and then it kind of wanes, you get the second shot, it boosts back up to where it was, and then it wanes, you get the third shot, it boosts back up to where it was. That's not what's going on, that actually that booster shot, that third shot, broadens the entire spectrum of immunity throughout your body. It, 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 it builds new kinds of immunity that you didn't have previously. Do I have that right? Um, in a way, um, I think the booster shot is, a much more powerful than the first two shots combined. Because right. the booster shot is uh, literally triples the antibody level that you have of even a fresh two dose. It's about six to eight times the antibodies than a, a waned, uh, six month waned two dose. So a booster shot is by far the most important shot of your protection goes from 700 antibodies to over 2000. Uh, close to 2,500 antibody levels. This is why um, the booster is really, really key. But even with boosters, you know, use the efficacy does go up, with up to uh, symptomatic infection protection goes up to about 70 to 75. But again, we're not in the 90s anymore in right. terms of the protection that we had against original string last year. Right. So would it be? Um, and people have to be really cognizant of that. So would it be accurate to characterize it this way, just to put it in very simple terms, um, that um, you know, get, if you're vaccinated, you're still at risk from this. In fact, you're still at risk of getting sick or even dying. If you're booster vaccinated, that risk is substantially diminished. 
but you're still at a very high risk, a, a measurable risk of getting infected. You, you probably won't die from it, you probably won't end up in the hospital, but you'll be able to pass it along to everybody around you who could be. And therefore, what is right now a crisis in our hospitals right across America, where about 90% or over 90% of all the people in the ICU and all the people dying are unvaccinated, that we're going to see because, you know, unvaccinated people feel like they can safely hang out with vaccinated people because, hey, these people are vaccinated. That's no longer going to be the case. Vaccinated people, while right. they're not going to get sick or die, they will be able to pass that virus along to unvaccinated people. And so the, the, these unvaccinated idiots among us, and in some counties, it's like over half of everybody, they are going to just, you know, they're just, it's going to be a, 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 a I, I almost used a word I can't use on the air, shall we say a storm uh, hitting our hospitals here when this happens, yeah. if they remain unvaccinated. Is that an accurate de de description? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and first of all, especially the unvaccinated people tend to hang out with other unvaccinated people as well, uh, more likely. Um, but the holidays, they bring everyone together. Right. And there's going to be a lot of uh, cross infections, breakthrough infections, um, in, in transmission across these, you know, traditional boundaries of people who are vaccinated, unvaccinated. And there's not enough testing in the U.S. And so vaccines protect you um, against transmission, the lower, but with two doses that's waned, it's not nearly enough. Pfizer, within literally three months, two, three months, the efficacy uh, with just two shots drops down to just low to mid 30s, 34 percent. Of what it, of what it what was. Yeah. Which is two shots. Yeah. So with, with third shot, you're protected. But again, the protection is only in the 70s, um, not... It's not nearly what, what we think uh, it is before. So instead of 100 people, now it's 30 people are getting it, uh, as opposed to previously when you had 95% just five people. That's that's a huge, huge difference uh, of a shift. I, um, I, 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 think I, yeah. About it. yeah, I get it. I, I think a lot of Americans are, are familiar with how insanely contagious uh, measles is. I mean, we've got uh, something like a 97, 98 percent vaccination rate for measles across the United States, and and still it, it, small numbers of people refusing to get vaccinated. These little you know religious cults or whatever um, keep popping up measles lo local measles epidemics. You know, we've seen we saw a lot of this two three years ago uh, in California actually. Um, it, compare that because I think that's the most contagious. Uh, you know, uh, virus that's respiratory uh, that, that, that affects humans right now, um, or at least serious one. Compare that with Omicron. Yeah, uh, measles um, had like a, an R naught around 15, 12 to 15. But so for every person Omicron, who's infected, they infect I, 12 to 15 other people. Yeah, so each person infects 12 to uh, 15 additional people, which is really, really fast. Even two is really fast. But with Omicron, we think that it's about, uh, you know, the original variant was about three or four, and Delta was about six to eight. But if this is truly, truly about four times faster than Delta and five times faster than original, then you're literally getting into the 20s, 30s um, in terms of R not theoretically, you know, if mm -hmm. there was no mitigation, R not. So it might be no more mitigation. infectious than measles. Yeah, I think so. So, think so, so. F let's That's let's turn this let's turn this into practical uh, ad advice for for people who work in a relatively small workplace where they're being careful. I'm speaking specifically of us. You know, in in this studio right now, Louise and Nate and I are all sitting in the same room. Joyce is sitting in the other room answering phones. Um, you know, we we all live in our own little bubbles. We're being very very careful. We test every mor Monday morning right here in the studio using the you know the the rapid tests. And when any of us uh, encounter somebody we're not sure of, uh, we all test the next day. We've, we've gotten pretty anal about this. Um, should we be preparing to go back to doing the show remotely where we're all working from home because this thing is coming? Yeah, that's a very tough question. I would say, first of all, there's other things you can do. I think testing is really important, but I think testing once a week may not be enough. Um, there's cases of people testing negative at breakfast, negative at lunch, positive at dinner. Right, right. It's, it's just that fast. 
Right. Um, I think you should test on a more regular basis, even potentially daily. I think you should install HEPA filters. We've got um, one. We haven't done so. Yeah, in we've all got one the with work. a UV light that kills viruses, and it's blowing right, UV, all the air in the, the room. The upper room UV is also really good uh, in any conference room that has yeah. more air than uh, one HEPA filter can handle. But I think all of these together uh, and ventilation together are really, really critical. So what about? But unfortunately, many schools and workplaces don't have that. If right. they don't have that, that's a workplace um, danger in, in many ways. Yeah. And I really worry for a lot of teachers and a lot of other s schools and other workplaces that just cannot do that because they are truly in danger. And, you know, I don't want to, at this point, you know, I'm not advocating for lockdown because there's so much more we can do short of lockdown. Right. But unfortunately, if you don't do them, there's only one alternative short of a big epidemic wave. Right. So what about, um, uh, you know, uh, grandparents or even parents whose children are going to daycare or going to school, if this thing is, is even more virulent, more, more contagious than, than measles, it seems like a virtual certainty at some point in the next two to four weeks that that kid, maybe not even showing any symptoms, is going to come home with Omicron and inflect, infect mom and dad or or particularly, you know, grandparents who are over 70, where even the booster doesn't give them, you know, the full immunity that it would to somebody who's in their 40s, for example. Um, is it time for grandparents to say to their grandchildren or, or to their, you know, their kids about their grandchildren, you know, I'm going to take a pause here for a month or so and we're not going to hang out with the grandkids? Yeah, I think that's something we have to consider. Um, I think it depends on the risk of each individual um, workplace and each individual family is how vulnerable your grandparents are. But if your grandparents are very vulnerable, then we should definitely consider that. And I think we should also test, in not just the morning of, not just the week beginning of the week, but be immediately, immediately before any gathering. Like, almost like, hey, someone's knocking on your door, have them test in a side room or in the garage before they enter. I think that's the best way. And, and even the little kids? Outdoor gatherings could be even better. Even the grandchildren? Or especially well, the grandchildren? Just everyone, just just don't gather inside if you have high risk factor individuals. Right. I think that's what we have to do. Um, and, par and grandparents should live in a sequestered room with HEPA filters um, away from everyone else, especially uh, until at least a week after school has been out so yeah. that there's no carryover from the right. school. So, uh, wow. And, and so just to clarify, in your opinion, Dr. Dr. Eric Feigelding, the only thing that will get us back to anything resembles, that resembles normal is when we get vaccine levels with boosters. Booster, you know, in other words, thinking of, this, of these shots as a three-shot regimen now instead of a two-shot right, regimen. Exactly. When, when everybody has their three shots, then we can say, okay, we're, we're where we are with measles, where, you know, we've got this largely under control, there will be local outbreaks. But it's going to take over 95% of all Americans to be boosted? Yeah. Um, I hate to say it, but we have to get up, our boosters have to get into the 70, 80% to really uh, be good. And the, the, the sad thing is, I don't think we're going to get there because we, we're not even there for... Two doses. Well, two doses right. were barely scraping upper 60s and low 70s. Um, you know, hopefully with kids we can get more. But for boosters, I'm not sure, given yeah. that we're not not even that many people are eligible yet. Dr. Eric Feigelding, the first whistleblower on the COVID two. pandemic. You can follow him on Twitter, which is uh, where I follow him, and it's just he's just brilliant. You need to read him every day. Dr. Eric Ding, D R E R I C D I N G is his Twitter handle. Dr. Feigelding, thanks so much for dropping by. Great talking with you.